Just like the song that threw it off. Even before I, we got saved, God was still good. Amen. Think about what I just said. How many of y'all remember? I, I remember growing up on the farm. I remember Chuck, I remember about 10, 12, 13 years old, somebody walking around on the farm and thinking, they got to be somebody watching over me. I'm just being honest with God. They got to be somebody watching over me that, that's keeping me out of the, from getting hurt. And, and you know, I could see it at a young age. Think about all the mess you got into before you got saved. And, and look at that. You say, I don't want the hand of God. I'm, I'm in God's protection. Was there. Because he knew what we were going to be. Amen. If you the Bible, let's go to Ruth chapter 2. Ruth chapter 2. We'll read verse 1 through verse 10. If you're excited about the word of the Lord, say amen. 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 Let's stand in honor of God's word when we get there. Very familiar scripture to anybody that's been in church any amount of time. If you've read the Bible most of the time, you, you, if you've been in church for a any amount of time you've heard somebody speak about Ruth, preach about Ruth, sing about Ruth. Most of us know the story of Ruth. I, uh, somebody told my wife here a while back, and I, she didn't say who it was, so I don't have no idea. She said, I wish, somebody said, I wish the preacher would quit saying this very familiar scripture because it ain't very familiar scripture to everybody. I, you know, well, Wayne, everybody has been studying the Bible on me and you have. But, you know, I guess it's not very familiar scripture sometimes to everybody. Ruth chapter 2, if you're there, say amen. Verse 1, And Naomi had a kinsman of her house, husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him whose side I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned, gleaned the field after the reapers, and her hat was to lie upon part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord is with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servants that was over the reapers, Whose, whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabite's damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves, so she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little while in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to clean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by to my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young man had grown. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Lord, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for the service so far. Thank you, God, for just being so good to us, God. Lord, as Mike sung the song, God, you have been good. Every day of our life, God, you've been good, Lord. And God, I pray right now, Lord, you'd help us tonight, God, to just be able to take something out of your word, dear God, that we could use it in our lives, Lord. Help us right now, God, encourage your people. God, help us, Lord, just to have strength to keep on going for the, for the journey that's ahead of us. And God, we praise you for all you do, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach just a little while on the thought of Ruth's service for the Lord. Ruth's service for the Lord. We know this story. We know this, and, and, and I don't want to try to get ahead of myself with some of this stuff I'm going to try to bring out as, I, as I'm preaching the message. But number one, Ruth was active for the Lord. I want you to notice that in verse 2, the Bible says, And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. This was somebody that was not a, a, a Jew. You understand something? Uh, Naomi and her husband, they went, they, uh, there was a, the Bible says there was a famine in chapter 1. They go into the land of Moab. The famine hits. The, the father dies. The two sons die. They have taken wives 
of the Moabite people. The two sons die. One of the one of the uh, girls says, I, "I'm going back to my people," but uh, uh, we, we know that Ruth says, "I'm staying with you." And understand, so she 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 was not a Jew, so she was there uh, uh, just basically trying to fit in, brother Robert. She but she but we got to understand something, folks. When you're doing something, we need to do all we can for the Lord. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 2, verse 10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work or device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where the light goes. Let me tell you something, folks. We got too many lazy, sleepy Christians now. Bless you, Lord. Why ain't the church house full tonight? And listen. I, I'll be honest with you. We got a good number here on Wednesday night. Praise the Lord for each one that's come this way. But I'll be honest with you. If we went across America, and uh, most churches are closed tonight. People think they all, they, everything's all right. We, I'm, I'm good to go. I, I don't have to do anything. Let me tell you something. I believe that salvation, uh, uh, brother Kevin, did not cost us not one dime. But getting to heaven is going to cost you the world. We got too many Christians that's just, just, just ho hum anymore. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 11, be not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, and whatsoever you do, you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. James chapter 1, verse 22, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving our own self. Now, what does the Bible tell us about, about witnessing and about working for the Lord? Does it say stay home when the church service is going on? I ain't found that in the Bible yet. <laughs> Folks, we need to be working. I found this, I found a little illustration. And I, when I, I read this, this was kind of kind of humorous, but it's a, a real good illustration about what I'm trying to point out in this first point tonight. Dr. J.D. Gamble tells the story of General Stonewall Jackson's famous valley campaign. Jackson's army found itself on the wrong side of a river and needed to be on the other side. After telling his engineers to plan and build a bridge so the army could cross, he called his wagon master in to tell him that it was urgent that the wagon trains cross the river as soon as possible. The wagon master started gathering all the logs, rocks, fence, rails that he could find and build a bridge. Long before daylight, General Jackson was told that by his wagon master that all the wagons and artillery had crossed the river. General Jackson asked, where are the engineers and what are they doing? The wagon master's only reply was, they're in the tent drawing up plans. That's how most Christians want to operate. Instead of getting out and doing it, we want to plan it and do it. What happened to just do it? Just get out there and do it. You know, Brother Jackie challenged the, the men's class. He, he, we have those pamphlets, but he said, just, just give these to somebody. So just give them to a stranger and, and invite them to church. And, and we need to do we need all our classes need to be doing that. Our whole church needs to be doing that. We need to be getting the gospel out to a lost and dying world. But I'm telling you right now, if we don't get them, I, I was I was I was visiting Preacher Mike the other day, and I was backing out of Preacher Mike's driveway. I looked back in the mirror, Brother Robert, and I picked my phone up and told Preacher Mike, I said, be on the lookout, Mormons is on the way. There was two of them walking up the street. Preacher Mike texted me back, Barry, just a little bit. He said, that's all right, the dogs took care of them. <laughs> Bro, Wayne, everybody ain't got dogs. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, they're rich in people when we as Christians are not. 97 degrees outside, two men walking down the street, long black slacks, white shirt, black tie. And we sitting in our homes not doing what we're supposed to do for God. Ruth did what she could. Ruth was also reliable in her service. But, uh, verse 8 says, Then says Boaz to Ruth, Hearest thou not? My daughter come out to glean after another field. Neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maids. In other words, uh, she was reliable, so she stayed where she was at. And, and I, I was thinking, I've been thinking about this, Preacher John, for the last several weeks. Loyalty is something that's gone. That's right. Amen. Loyalty is not what it once was, Richard. You just could not tell you if you was born in America, you was an American. Period. Amen. But now it ain't that way. Now we now everybody's been brainwashed, and I'm telling you right now, listen, listen. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and say this, okay? I thank God that God sent me the Lincoln. 
Amen. And I know it, it's kind of bad in Lancaster every once in a while that people people going from this church to this church to this church. But I'm telling you, folks, all around this state, it's a whole lot worse in Lancaster. Uh, Wes is back there looking at me smiling. Wes knows exactly what I'm talking about. Where we're from, I'm telling you, it's, it almost seems like Wes, where we're from, when the preacher leaves one church, several other folks go follow him to the next church. And then they'll, they'll stay there a few years and they'll go to the next. What about being loyal? Me and Brother Scoopy was talking the other day that the original 38 that started this church, how many of them still come? Don't you understand something? She stayed where she was planted. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, and Timothy, uh, Paul is talking to Timothy. He says, Hold fast the sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and in love, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, you stay with what you're taught. I'm going to go ahead and tell you something, folks. I'm free will Baptist because I believe free will Baptist is as close to the Bible as we can get, Brother Jerry. I believe that with all my heart. I have no problem with somebody being Baptist. I have no problem with somebody being Pentecostal. I have no problem with somebody being Nazarene or whatever the denomination might be. I have no, as long as it's the Bible believing denomination. The church of God, it don't, I, I have no problem with it. But I'm free will Baptist because I believe the free will Baptist doctrine is as close to what the Bible says as we can get, Brother Benny. I've been raised this way. I ain't going to change. I'm just going to tell you, I am not going to change. There's some things that I've got a made up mind on. Hey, the free will Baptist doctrine, the free will Baptist ever get away from the doctrine, Brother Wayne, I'll cease to be free will Baptist. If free will Baptist ever get away from believing in the old King James Bible, I'll cease to be free will Baptist. I'm, I'm King James only. I'm not going to apologize for that. That's what preacher buddy told me, y'all, a long time ago. Go ahead and set your convictions right now, and that way when you're faced with things, you won't have to worry about it. Somebody asked me a question. I told you, I thought I'd give this illustration with me time. Somebody called me one day, I, I can remember, I was sitting under my carport on my steps, Brother Scooby. They said, Preacher, I got a question. What's your opinion on drinking? I said, Well, the Bible says that wine is a marker, strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. He said, Well, Preacher, I know what the Bible says, but what's your opinion? I said, Well, the Bible says. He said, Preacher, I know what the Bible says. I said, My opinion is the Bible. Because if my opinion is not what the Bible says, my opinion is wrong. I don't care what nobody says. Amen. He told Paul, Paul told Timothy, you stay with what you know. She was reliable. But I said, just stay here. You ain't got to go nowhere else. Let me tell you something, folks. Stay where you're planted. You ain't got to go nowhere else. God will take care of you. <coughs> Amen. Also, Ruth was humble in her service. In verse, in verse 10, Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? When's the last time you thought, Why does God love me? See, if we ain't careful, we've been saved so long, we don't let thoughts like that run through our mind. <coughs> but John, why does God love you? Let's go what, what made you so special that God loved you? Brian, why, why does God love you? She tells Boaz, why are you treating me this why are you treating me this way? I'm a stranger. She was a Moabite. That's a foreigner. And y'all know how we all look at foreigners. Everybody, somebody say amen right there. Don't get off holy on me now. Somebody walking down the street, they, 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 they look a little different, they dress a little different. We are, we back up, kind of look at them. What the world that? She was a farmer. She was not a Jew. She had no rights to be there. But all, but all of a sudden, she got somebody that's treating her kind. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ loved you enough to treat you kind? Aren't you glad that God loved you enough that He gave His only begotten Son for you? Understand something. She was humble in her service. She, she knew that she didn't deserve it. She knew she shouldn't be there. But thank God she was. She was happy that she was. Sometimes we ought to come to church and just get happy because God allowed us to be here. Sometimes we ought to come to church and just get happy because God allowed, God allowed His Son to die. For you. We ought to be able to raise our hands and honor Him because you know you shouldn't be here. You don't deserve to be here. And if you got what you really deserve, we'd all be in hell today. Amen. She was humble. She knew she didn't deserve it. But she 
just like us, she wasn't turning it down either. I thank God for salvation. Yes. And when I finally come to realize that I needed Jesus, I thank God for everything He's done for me. Amen. I don't deserve it. No, sir, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve God being good to me this week. But He has been. And I'm going to accept it. Amen. She was also separated in her service. Now, I want you to know, verse 11, And Boaz answered and said to her, It has faithfully been shown me that all thou hast done to thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and art come to a people which thou knowest not heretofore. She left her old life. And listen. The Bible tells in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, Brethren, I count my, not, myself not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. That's the way we ought to live. Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus said, No man, having put his hand in the plow and looked back, is fit for the kingdom of heaven. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things, old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. We ought to forget that old path, that old life. Amen to that. Too many times, though, we try to crucify the old man, and when something bad happens, we want to bring him back. Have a resurrection service. I'm going to be honest with you. Let's just be honest, okay? My old man still comes up every once in a while. Amen. 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 Come on, Brent. And every time he comes up, I'm just being honest with you, every time he comes up, it embarrasses me. <clears throat> My wife told me here just, just a few weeks ago, you ought to be over this. Sometimes I want to pop her too. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Your wife and your husband tell you, your wife, they, they'll be honest with you and everybody else is going to pat you on the back. And she was right. That's the problem. She was right and I didn't want to hear it. Because the old man don't want to hear that kind of stuff. But every once in a while, that anger swells. I mean, I, I, I would think after being saved almost 35 years that I would be, I would be over the anger issue. But guess what? The old man's still there. I, I would think you know that I would be over some of these some of these struggles that I struggle with, but guess what? The old man is still there. She left her old life. I have to think she left everything about her old life. Chapter 1, verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from falling after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Man, that's how, that's how I got saved. When I got saved, I'm just telling you, Sandy, when I got saved, I wanted to leave it all behind. I did. I, I wanted to leave everything behind. I wanted to follow Jesus. And I have, and I, 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 I've done fairly well as being a Christian. I couldn't have got this far without him, glory to God. But I'm just going to be honest with you folks. Every once in a while, that old man still comes back. But she left everything. How many of us have left everything about the old life? Or do we still keep bringing it up? Don't you know something else? She was rewarded in her service. Verse 12 says, And the Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. i got to think about this, and this will, this will be a whole other sermon. Ruth, a Moabitess, a stranger that was in the land, somebody that did not deserve it. Her first husband had died in the famine. She, she, she really, really in, all, in all honesty, she shouldn't have been where she was at. And if we'll be honest with you, we shouldn't be here tonight. But God saved us. And God, but, but she was given a home, she was given a husband, and she was given a heritage. If you start looking up Ruth, guess who's in the line of Jesus? <coughs> Ruth. <coughs> guess what, folks? You and I have been given a, a heritage. You and I have been given a home in heaven. You and I have been given a husband, glory to God. And his name is Jesus. The Bible says that we are the bride of Christ. Thank God our lives can fall right in with us. We're strangers. We didn't deserve it. We shouldn't be here. But thank God we are rewarded. How many of us have been rewarded multiple times? Just like God, uh, Mike sung the song. God's been good.
come to us. We shouldn't be where we're at. We shouldn't be as blessed as we are. But thank God, God's been good to us. We've been rewarded on this side. Amen. God's been... I, let me tell you something, folks. It would be all right, Brother Scooby, and Brother Raffles, it would be, it would be good. If when we got saved, we had no blessings whatsoever on this side, but we could go to heaven. It'd be worth it. Amen? It'd be worth living in a little old, little old uh, uh, shack somewhere, and as long as we can make heaven in our home. We didn't have to go to heaven. But think about what God's done for you since you got saved. Man, I get, I get thinking about the blessings of God like my son the song, God's been good to me. My, 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 my. I think about, you know, we moved up here. We had four in our family and now look at us. God's been good to us. Amen. We moved, when we moved up here, um, I mean, let's just think about it as, as a church. When we moved up here, we were, we were meeting in the, in the building up there, school. You, you remember? I mean, a, a big day. A big day. Yeah, I remember one time me and Brother Wayne, we had roll call Sunday. And we, we, I think we had 350 that day. And people were coming up and leaving the church. They, they didn't have nowhere to park. They didn't have nowhere to see it. And then in 2003, look what God done. God built this building. And God is blessed. And God is multiplied. And God is, and now look what God's doing. We're building a building up garden. We can say this one inside. That's God. That ain't us. That's God. I'm telling you, folks, we have been rewarded on this side. I'm glad that God's been good. I'm glad He saved me. I'm glad I got a home in heaven. I'm glad I got a heritage in heaven. I'm glad I got all that lined up waiting on me. But glory to God, I'm going to go ahead and shout a little while I'm on this side. I'm glad God gave me a good wife. I'm glad God gave me some great children. I'm glad God gave me some great grandchildren. I'm glad God gave me a great church to come to. I'm glad God gave me His Word. I'm glad God helped me. I'm glad God feeds me. I'm glad I'm telling you, I've been blessed on this side. Amen. 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 She was rewarded on this side. The Bible says, now listen, this, we talking about somebody. We talking about somebody, Brother Scooby, that didn't deserve it. Right. And she's out there. Now listen, you, you got to get a picture of what's going on. She's out there, Benji, and she's following the reapers. And, and in that day, we know that they didn't, they didn't uh, glean the, the corners of the field. They, they left that for the poor. And, and, but she's following the reapers. And whatever they drop, that's what she's picking up, Richard. And Boaz goes to those reapers and says, Listen, every once in a while, just throw some down. Yeah, you don't do that. Every once in a while, just throw a big handful on the ground. Well, she's right behind you. She'll pick it up. Aren't you glad that when you don't deserve it, <laughs> and you know you're a stranger, and you know you don't deserve it, that every once in a while God just does a handful of you away? Amen. 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 Folks, that's what we're living at. That's what we're living at right now. God's been so good to us. <coughs> Listen, if you had a nice car, that's a handful of glory to God. If you got a good family, that's a handful. If you got a good, if you got your health right now, that's a handful from God. Ruth was reliable. Ruth was there. Ruth was blessed beyond measure in her service for the Lord. Listen, and I, I you know, and everybody knows. I, Brother Tony said this the other day, and I, I was kind of giving him a hard time on the front row. He said. You know, Brother Tony says this about every year. Says, you know, he ain't never had a preacher that was as fit as I am. Most of them kind of overweight. And, you know, it just is what it is. I told Brother Tony, I said, you ain't never had a preacher for 20 years either. Right. And I'm, I'm shooting for 20 more. But think about how good God's been to us. Amen. And how good God's blessed us. Him. Listen, if you'd have told me 20 years ago, when I first moved to Lancaster, Brother Wayne, if you'd have if I'd have told you and you'd have told me that first Sunday what God was going to do, it would have scared us to death. <laughs> if you'd have told us 20 years ago, I'm just being honest, if we'd built a million dollar building and pay it off, 
and then get ready and build a, a, another building, 1.4 million. I said, folks, I'm going back to Conway. Y'all do what y'all want. See, that's the blessings of God. Amen. You gotta let God have control. You got to let God do it. Because if you if you try to mess it up, if you try to get in there and mess it up, you'll mess it up. But if you'll just let God do it, you'll just let God take over. If you'll just let God lead the way, He'll pour out the blessings on you and He'll throw them handfuls all over you. You won't even be able to take it because you won't even be able to contain it. That's where you get new houses from. That's where you get the rent like you are talking about the other day from. That's how God operates. When we're faithful, and we, we, when we read the scripture, we realize that Ruth was faithful. Ruth was reliable. She was humble. And look what God did for her. And guess what? He does the same thing for us. Amen. Every day. Every day. But many of you would just come get us. Maybe just, you and Brother just come and maybe just play something. Understand something, folks. God's been good to you. I, I, you know, I didn't know Brother Mike was going to be singing tonight. I didn't, I didn't, we didn't, none of that was planned. But God's been so good to us. And the Bible tells us in Romans, it's our reasonable service, Brother John. It's our reasonable. In other words, in other words, God ain't asking, God ain't asking you to do nothing that's not reasonable. If God's been good to you, it's your reasonable service to serve Him. And to work for Him. And to invite people to church for Him. And to try to win the world for Him. That's just reasonable. How good has God been to you? God, we love you.